Now we are on to the top 10. Let us let's start with the number 10 player in the nation. That is linebacker Zayden Walker out of Sly County in Georgia. Yeah, this one is uh, one of my favorites in the entire cycle. And Zayden Walker dictates football games as a defensive player. You can play him on ball. You can play him off ball. I love the tenacity with how he plays. He plays the game proactive. We have proactive athletes. We have reactive athletes. This guy is a proactive athlete. So love his tenacity. Love his football instincts. He's always around the football. And if there is one guy, I think I've said this every time I've talked about Zayden Walker, that was born to play for Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs, it's this kid. Uh, so this guy... Uh, Obviously, uh, a big-time recruitment with Georgia in, in South Carolina, uh, but a heck of a player. At number nine, cornerback DJ Pickett out of Zephyr Hills in Florida. I call him a pterodactyl. That's because, I mean, he's listed there six foot two. I think he's closer to six foot three. He is a tall, long corner. Some schools want to play him on offense as a wide receiver, but I think the combo of the speed and the length warrants a look on the outside. He's gone sub 11 in the 100 meter dash six times this spring. Love him as a reactionary, a reactionary player. He can go find the football. Uh, DJ Pickett, certainly a guy that can shut down one side of the field. At number eight, defensive lineman Elijah Griffin out of Savannah Christian Prep in Georgia. If there's a guy that's just gotten lost in the shuffle in the top ten, it's Elijah Griffin. We don't really talk about him that much. 290 pounds. He's got 34 plus inch arms. He is very, very long and he is very, very versatile. You think about his first step quickness, that's really how he wins, but he can go speed to power as well. And if you're looking for a recent cop, he reminds me of DJ Hicks, uh, who signed with Texas A&M, now with the Aggies, a former five star. He can do a little bit of everything. So this kid, uh, really, really high floor, but there is a lot to tap into at the next level as well. At number seven, linebacker Jonah Williams out of Ball in Texas. This might be my favorite defender here in the 2025 cycle. Reminds me, a former Clemson star, uh, Isaiah Simmons. You know, he plays safety, he plays wide receiver. You kind of want to put him in that linebacker mold when you see him in size. But dig into the testing profile. He's quick enough to play safety. Watch the footage. He can be a man-on-man -man coverage. I just hope Jonah Williams actually plays football because he's also a really talented uh, baseball prospect. And MLB scouts are already talking about him potentially being, you know, a round one, round two guy. So Isaiah Simmons, potential defensive chess piece. Excuse me, Jonah Williams. At number six, cornerback Naeem Offord out of Parker. He is committed to Ohio State. It, it, it's crazy the Buckeyes got two of these guys in Naeem Offord and, and Devin Sanchez but let's talk about Offord six foot plus he's got a long wingspan at six foot six at 11 one in the broad jump he's lower body explosive but he's also super fluid too I like this guy uh, ability impressed man he can play off ball four INTs as a junior saw a little uptick there really dynamic athlete obviously if you're in this range you know you have that as well two-way snaps he's got some bounce to him and the good thing about Naeem Offer, I think technically uh, there's still a lot to clean up which is a good thing that's what we think of the athlete Ohio State as a day one dude and Naeem Offer. I got a lot of day one dudes in this class of 2025 so far before we move on to our top five let's remind you six through ten and we want to Put a little spotlight on Jonah Williams, who Andrew just talked about his versatility. Just how unique is what they could potentially do with him on the defensive side of the ball? Whoever ends up with him. <laughs> <laughs> I think behind the scenes in the scouting department, I mean, we went back and forth. Do we list him as a safety? Do we list him as a linebacker? Uh, ultimately, we stuck with linebacker because I think he's a guy that's going to be closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, if he does play football. I, I brought up that baseball thing, and, you know, MLB scouts have told Mike Roach, who does an excellent job for us, like, it, it's real. I mean, there's a chance he could get a sizable contract and he could just go that route. Hopefully, again, that he doesn't. But, you know, with where we are right now uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, I mean, the position lines continue to get uh, blurred. You know, you know, really, what is a slot defender? What is a linebacker? What is his safety? To me, Jonah Williams is the type of guy you take, you get him on the field because he's an exceptional athlete, and then you figure it out later. Yeah, I think another second-level defender uh, that really has kind of stood out in this group, Zayden Walker. I talked about him, his ability to dictate a football game. I thought about the last guy, last defender that I thought about that you just always had to account for on the defensive side of the ball. He played a different position. That was Tyron Matthew, and what I mean with Zayden Walker is – 
This guy, you just have to watch wherever he is. They can move him around. You can flex him out, and he's comfortable doing a little bit of everything. I love the shock that he plays with. He's strong. He's violent at the point of attack. He can play sideline to sideline. He's as versatile as they come, and you think about a guy that just plays with a certain competitive temperament and plays the linebacker position the right way. He is a football player with elite level traits often it's really kind of one or the other you got the traits but you're not really that guy that's got the feel of everything this guy is a complete package uh and talk about somebody that you know i keep talking about these day one guys aiden walker is going to make his impact felt certainly on day one when he steps onto a college campus if you're a five star and ranked in the top 10 of your class you certainly hope to make an impact day one and we continue with those day one impact guys going to the number five player in the nation, that is wide receiver DeCorian Moore out of Duncanville, Texas. He's a verified burner. I think he's the most electric offensive playmaker in this class. We saw it last year at Duncanville. He just anchored a Duncanville 4x200 squad that set a national record for how fast that time was at the Texas State meet. Uh, snappy route runner, finds ways to get open. He's a menace after the catch. Someone's going to get him, and you're going to see him on your TV screen in 2025. He's ready to go. He can carve out a role. At number four, cornerback Devin Sanchez out of North Shore, and he is committed to Ohio State. Good day, to be, good day to be a Buckeye, especially when we just talked about Naeem offer. Now we got Devin Sanchez, 6'2", 170, 10'6", 9", 21, uh, You think about the genetics as well. Both parents, athletes at UTEP. Dad played football. Mom uh, was in track and field. This is a height, weight, speed corner that can do a little bit of everything, and he's about as pretty as they come. So when you talk about checking boxes, that's Devin Sanchez. Love the ball production. Love the fluidity, the ability to get in and out of uh, breaks as well. His mirror ability and man-to-man -man, he's got it all coming in at number three offensive tackle David Sanders out of Providence Day School in North Carolina he's been dealing with a labrum injury which is why we haven't seen him this offseason you know he played through it as a junior at Providence Day he was the Gatorade North Carolina player of the year I said this with Josh Petty but I think it applies to David Sanders he could be a top 247 pass rusher if he wanted to go that route. Love the frame, love his reactionary skills. He's going to have to put on some masks, but this is a prototypical tackle that can match speed rushers at the game's highest level. The number two player in the nation, quarterback Tavian St. Clair out of Bellefontaine. He is committed to Ohio State. This is a profile that's one of the most intriguing, I think, of any signal caller in the country. 6'4", 224 pounds. Andrew got to see him over the offseason, a guy that Andrew loves. And, you know, the group has come around on as well. But prototypical frame, the throwing motion, he's loose, he's athletic, can play on the perimeter. As you see here, he's got a, a little bit to add with his mobility, too. 22-9 and nine as a starter, 75 touchdowns, 18 INTs. He's already thrown uh, for over 7,000 yards. But the more you study him, the more you see that, this guy is an ascending player, and then with what we saw in the NFL draft, why not? The number one player in the class of 2025 is quarterback Bryce Underwood out of Belleville, and he is committed to LSU. Yeah, Emily, he maintains that number one pole position. I'll be honest, there were some conversations about potentially making Tavian St. Clair the top guy. And that's because Bryce Underwood, our last exposure point to him was that Division I state title game up in Michigan Thanksgiving weekend. I thought his final drive of the year left a lot to be desired. Had a chance to play hero. He wasn't. But Bryce Underwood, the past month, he's been the alpha dog at two different events. I mean, this is someone, Cooper said it with Julian Lewis's resume. How about Bryce Underwood? He is 40-2. and two. He's thrown 120 touchdown passes. That's the most out of any quarterback we have charted here in the 2025 cycle. He reminds me of Deshaun Watson. You know, we had question marks about him. He comes out and he answers back with two punches right at the OT7 in Orlando uh, and then the Under Armour camp in New Jersey. Clean mechanics reminds me of Deshaun Watson at this stage. There are the 32 five stars in the class of 2025. Andrew, you just kind of teased it. You considered, some people within the room considered Tavian St. Clair to be the number one player. So how wide is the gap between him and the number one player, Bryce Underwood? 
I think there's a, a sizable gap here. What's unique, you know, Bryce Underwood, we're not going to get him. It sounds like he's not going to be out in L.A. for the Elite 11 finals, which is fine. We've had some high-profile guys not be there. I mean, I had my fingers crossed that we were going to get Tavian St. Clair versus Bryce Underwood with, you know, Julian Lewis, George McIntyre, Matt Zollers, Keelan Russell all out there. Uh, so this one's probably going to play out during the senior seasons. We'll see if we get them in the All-Star games. You know, Bryce Underwood uh, – He's just so clean as a player. He, too, is also young for the grade. On the flip side, Tavian St. Clair, I love how he is wired. You know, spending some time around him at the Elite 11 Regional uh, up there in Columbus where he's going to play his football at Ohio State. You know, he's the first really uh, FBS recruit to come out of his high school in over 60 years. Uh, He's got a clean stroke. You get around him on the frame. I can't wait till some of these other guys uh, on the scouting cha- uh, team get a chance to see him. I mean, he he looks like a linebacker. He looks like an NFL quarterback. This is how you want them to look. He's gotten better and better every year. I think the year-over-year improvement, when we talk about these quarterbacks with TV and St. Clair, it is there. You know, he, he has gotten better. He gave up baseball. He wanted to focus on football. So we'll see. I think this is going to be a storyline through the rest of the cycle. You know, Bryce Underwood versus Tavian St. Clair.